Well, thank you for joining me on this short webcast. I'm going to run through some information about producing charts in the Functional Skills Level 2 Maths Test uh, on the City and Guild system. You'll find if you are sitting in a Level 2 Maths Test, you will very likely be asked to produce a chart using the software that you can see on the screen at the moment. I'm just going to talk through some of the key elements of it um, so you're prepared in terms of that test. So as you can see, when you ask to produce a chart, it will usually be in the third block of questions towards the end, and there's a number of different charts you can produce. I'm going to start with a bar chart uh, and go through some of the structure things. You'll see you're given this graph screen <clears throat> with two axes on it. So the vertical axis on the left-hand side is your y-axis, and the horizontal axis along the bottom is called the x-axis. We're going to produce a bar chart, and let's say we're producing one to show the number of items of fruit sold in a shop within a day. So the first thing we're going to do is what we want on our y-axis, our vertical axis on the left-hand side. We need to know that uh, we put some numbers on there, basically. The easiest way to do that is to click Edit Axis, and you'll see on the right-hand side there's this option for the vertical axis scale. The maximum value in this case is set as 10. Let's say the most we've sold is uh, 18 items, so we're going to actually make the maximum 20, slightly above the maximum, and we should always leave the minimum value as zero, so the y-axis starts at zero. We want to split our... Um, and access up into as many divisions as we want. But before that, we're going to click this bottom option where it says show numbers. So if I click there, click show numbers. And if I click number divisions, you'll see as I'm clicking and going up, on the left hand side of the screen, you can see the numbers going up. So if I had 10 and numbered divisions, you'll see between 0 and 20, the 10 number divisions are going up in twos. If obviously went up to 20 number divisions, they go up in ones. If I did the number divisions down to five, You'll see we go up in fours. Let's set in this case, we're going to go up in twos. So we want 10 number divisions. The key here is that I've clicked show numbers. If I take show numbers off, it's got the divisions, but not the numbers. But obviously, we want them put in automatically. So we're going to click OK. We're now going to say that we're going to sell four items of fruit. So that at the top, we've got the options for the number of bars, and we've got four items of fruit. So we're going to have number four bars. We're then going to say these number of these apples, we sold 14 of them. So all I'm doing is clicking and dragging the bar with the left mouse button up to 14. Try and be as accurate as possible. It's sometimes a little bit difficult on the line, but as long as you're uh, fairly accurate, that should be OK. For apples, we sold 14. Bananas, we sold eight. Let's say oranges, we sure sold 17. So I need to go between the lines of 16 and 18. And uh, four through, let's say melons. And melons, we sold only four. OK. What we want to do now is add um, some colour to it so we can distinguish between the uh, four different bars. So let's say our apples are going to be in green. And all I'm doing here is clicking the bar colour and then clicking the colour that I want. So uh, yeah, apples are green. I think the next one I said was bananas. So let's click yellow. And all I'm going to do is click in that bar to turn it yellow. I'm pretty sure I said oranges was next. So that's almost orange. And finally, our melons can be, let's say, blue. I know you don't have blue melons, but it will distinguish it well from the other colours. OK, so we've now got our four bars and we've colour coded them and we've raised them up to the right numbers. The easiest thing now to do is to add a key to show what each of those bars stand for. So if we click add key, you'll see the first option we've got is the title. And you should always add a title to a chart. So in this case, chart showing fruit sold in one day. And it says there we can add key items. Well, we had four different items, didn't we? So let's add four of those. And I'm going to take the first one and click edit. The colour of that one was green and it was apples. So I the word apples and click apply. The second one was yellow. All I'm doing here is clicking with the left mouse button, clicking there and typing bananas. Edit our third one uh, was orange for oranges. And finally, our blue one, if I click edit, blue was for melons. And if I click apply and then OK, You'll see we've got the key on the right hand side. There is a text box option at the top as well. You'll see this T. And if I click that, I could have put below each one here. I could have written what they were. So apples. However, I don't need to do that because I've put the key in there as well. So one or the other is fine. Personally, I quite like the key at the top right because it makes it a bit clearer. What I would put at the bottom is a title for the whole of the axis along the bottom. So these are types of fruits. So we just type in the word fruit. And as you see, I can do some formatting. I can make it bold and centered and those kind of things. I wouldn't go over the top of that. We also need a, a label for the left hand axis. So I'm going to T. And this was the number of sales. So I'm simply going to type in there. I'm simply going to type in sales. Let's make more detail than that. I can reposition this and things if I want to. If it's in the way. 
There are some other things you can do and other formatting things. However, what you see on the screen there would be great um, for this test. So we've got our y-axis on the left-hand side showing the number of sales. We've raised all of our bars to the right number. We've been quite accurate with those. We've got a label on the bottom axis saying that's fruit. And on the right, top right, we've got this chart title that shows the, chart, the title of the chart overall and then the, foot, the key for the four items. If you have time in the test, what you've done there, what I've done there would be absolutely fine. If you have time in the test, one thing that um, is recommended but not essential is just to put the number at the top of each bar, just so it's a bit easier to see and clearer to see the information at the top of each bar. So that one was 14. All I'm doing here is using text boxes. This one was eight. I want to do the others and so on and so on. Not essential, those boxes, but just make it a little bit clearer um, for the for any reader to see, particularly in this case, the marker, to see the information um, at the top of the bars and, and just make it clarify exactly the numbers. That would get you full marks in this case. I've obviously got it through quite quickly here. You can have a chance to practice on the system before the test, but in the real test, take some time. Remember, you're noting down your numbers, your figures from usually a previous question uh, and make your graph. Uh, it doesn't matter how pretty it is with different colours and things, it's about it being accurate and clear to see. So that's a bar chart. I've gone through everything bar chart. I'm just going to reiterate that I use the edit axis to, uh, sorry, the edit key to put my title in and, and the different colours and things. And I use edit axis was key, particularly the right hand side, the vertical axis scale. I changed the maximum value to just above our maximum. Our maximum was 18, I think I said. So I've gone up to 20. Um, my minimum value should always start at zero on a y axis. I've split the number of divisions I want to into how many different divisions, and key is I've clicked the show number button, so it's um, put the labels in for the number labels in for you automatically. I'm just going to reset this in the test. Unless you've made a massive mistake, don't reset or you'll lose everything. I'm going to reset it, and you'll see I've also got the option for a line graph. Give me exactly the same axis, and if I wanted to add a key, I could with a title. And again, I can edit the axis to show my numbers and show my number divisions and so on. So that's the, the setup of it is exactly the same. The difference for the line graph is when I want to put my first um, cross in on where I want it to be on the line, let's take, uh, all I do is click the white X and I'll click where I want it to be. Let's say I want it on this line and it's going to be on number four. You'll notice I'm going to click where the arrow pointer is, not where the X is. So I don't want to put where the X is there, it's where my arrow pointer is. And if I click there, again, try to be as accurate as possible. Click that one, number four. You'll see it's now automatically selected the green X, which is adding another number. And you'll see every time I click wherever I want to be, it will draw a line between my numbers as I go along the axis along here. And if I make a mistake somewhere, I didn't want a number, uh, an X in, let's say I put an X in there by mistake, all I do is click the red X with the takeaway sign and take that one out. So the X is the same, uh, and I'm just putting the, the, the plot points in there, and it joins them up automatically with straight lines. The third option I'm going to show you is the scatter graph. Very similar setup. This time, instead of drawing lines, all it's going to give me is different X's, and I'll put my X's wherever I want them to be. Let's say they're spread out like this, and you'll see I get the option to put a line of best fit, which is covered in some other learning. For the line of best fit, all I do is click that and hold onto the left mouse button, drag to where I want my line to be, and then I can reposition it as I see fit for the line of best fit. As I say, if you're, if you're unsure uh, how to work out or how to plot in a line of best fit, you can go through that in some separate training. The final one quickly I'm going to mention is a pie chart, uh, a little bit more simple because all you're doing is the number of segments and you can color code them again as we've done before. And you can put a key on so you've got a title and colors. And then if you want to change them, all you do is click that chart and you drag it to where it may be. Less common that it comes up with a pie chart, more likely to be a, um, a bar chart, line graph or scatter, scatter graph. But hopefully that's shown you how to use each of those. The key being, that you're using the edit axis at the top, particularly for the vertical axis scale, right axis, and the add key to put your title in and some more information. So I hope that was useful. If you've got any questions, then please get in touch. Uh, and as I say, you, I can set you up on the practice test system so you can have a play about with the software that you've seen today. Thanks very much for listening.